Okay, so I am back on this thing again. I've been doing some maths. Now this is the um, circuit for the uh, focus adjustment. Now this 500k pot here is on the IF board which is stuck on the front. A couple of wires go into the time based PCB. Uh, here and here is where this pot is part of the circuit. That's by the by, anyway. So we've got this massive potential divider here. As I mentioned before, this is just to build up some withstand voltage because each of the individual components obviously are only rated up to a certain voltage. Considering the potential here is 1,900 volts, we have to split it up into little, uh, little segments. Anyway, so what the problem is, is that I'm measuring here, well no sorry, I'm measuring Vx, and this is Vg. I have turned this fully anti-clockwise, so this point to here is definitely not volts. So using potential divide equation, blah blah blah, blah Vg should equal 1651.25 volts, so that's Vg3. Vx should equal 1900 minus that, which should give you 248.74 volts. And just for the sake of argument, R507, 508, and VR402 should equal 821k. And I've just powered it on, and Vx is minus 12.808 volts. Okay, so if I power it on, Right, I get minus 12.5 volts for Vx. That's wrong. 12.4 volts there. Then that is wrong. I think I should measure the voltage drop across each one and see if I actually do get minus 1,900 volts. Right, so I've measured the voltage across each of these... Uh, resistors individually and I get 95.7 volts. Well that is really wrong. So I'm literally going to measure it straight if it's wrong. And if it's wrong then I should get 95 volts here. So I'm just going to power it on now. Fingers crossed. Otherwise this meter is going to go pop. 100 yeah, 110 volts. Oh, and it's going down. That's fluctuating an awful lot. There's my problem. That's why I am not getting 1,900 volts. I'm measuring off the back of the um, the CRT PCB. I'm going to measure it off the time-based PCB and let's see if it's the same, just in case I've got any losses in the wiring. Right. That's it. That's measuring straight off the time-based PCB. Between... The top of R507 and the other end of the resistor chain, which is the bottom of R521. Uh, yeah. That is the voltage. 100 volts. My 1900 volt supply. Ooh, it's just turned itself off. Wakey, wakey. Yeah, you won't be measuring AC. Oh, just out of curiosity. Ooh, don't like that in AC. So that says to me there might be some ripple on there. But, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our problem. Remember that piece of solder splat I picked up? Yeah, it did come from out here. And look what the freaking heck's happened here. That is a big solder splat. That is a possible cause. I was just about to measure the 400 volts. AC, or 480 volts AC coming into this voltage multiplier. It looks like a voltage multiplier, it's just a big bank of diodes and capacitors. And so that looks like a problem. Oh, for God's sake. Right, I'm going to find out what's caused that and see if I can clear it up. But that is just. Blech. I'm going to find out what's caused that. Right, that's that pulled out. Um, it doesn't look like it's melted off anything else. Well, it doesn't look like it from this side, so I'm going to flip it over and have a look at the other side and see if the solder's um, actually um, 
disappeared from the side. I wonder if it's leaked through, or leaked upwards, or leached upwards maybe. But very strange if it did. Well, chance would be a fine thing for that solder splat. It's definitely not that. And I've just measured the uh, output of the transformer. And it's about 460 odd volts AC. <sighs> so... I'm definitely not getting 1,900 volts, but I did notice something on the schematic. The the 1,900 volts is coming onto here, and 1,962 volts is coming out here, but I can't find where the 1,900 volts is coming out of. So I'm going to have to do some more reading of the schematic. The reason why I'm getting uh, the right potential between there and there is because the minus 1,900 volts is tied to one end of this transformer which it gives approximately 31 volts AC and is halfway rectified with a bit of smoothing cap brings it to about approximately 40 odd you know, between 40 45 volts and raises it up or well, rather subtracts it because it's plus so minus 900 plus about 30 odd that's 23 volts gives you minus 1877 volts so I've measured between the cathode of D505 and the minus 1900 volt line, and I am getting about. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, about 41 volts. So that's okay. That explains that, but it still doesn't explain why I am not getting 1900 volts. I am still trying to hunt down that generator. Some people look at me crazy when I say this. When I say, can you smell hot? I just had that now. And that, that, that thing there, don't worry, it's turned off. But that is bleeding, roasting. That is uh, an Opto, I think. If you can find an ident on it. It's got a VDE marking on it, which means it, it's... it's Yeah, IC501. IC501. Huh. Right, so I've just moved that Opto. Removed it. There it is. There it isn't. Right, and if I power it on now, and I measure what well, I measured before, VX, which I worked out to be, excuse the iPad, 248, I get 220. So I've cleared the fault. So this little bugger went, went bye-bye. I'll do some post model to one and see exactly what went wrong. Right, so I've got these um, clips on. Pin one is the anode of the uh, Opto LED. Pin two is the cathode. And I've got it in diode test. I'm measuring 1.33 volts. That's not right. And if I swap them, yep, I get 1.33 volts as well. The other way around. We have found our busted component, thank Christ. And by measuring VX again and it coming up to uh, 240 odd volts, the fault is cleared. So the part number on this is. Well, the markings on it say CQYATN606A. I think it's a TFK. No, that's the date stamp, 0883. So that's the 8th month in 8th, eight, uh, sorry, 8th week in 83. So this chip is older than I am.